fish right there on the drop. Nice. I love it when they hit a spinnerbait on the drop. That's awesome. Feels like a nice fish. Oh yeah. Really nice fish. Woohoo, it's a piggy. He's a piggy. Oh, come on, sweetie. Yeah, that's a nice fish. Woo. Well, good morning, folks. I'm Tyler Hicks, brand ambassador for Old Town Canoe and Kayak. Out doing some spring bass fishing. Water temps are still really cold this year. We're having a colder than average year. I'm out here in one of my favorite uh, bass fishing platforms, which is the Old Town Autopilot 120. Man, that is, look at the belly on her. She is, she's already thinking about the spawn. And the Autopilot has really revolutionized fishing in many ways because of all the features built into the iPilot motor on this kayak. Those include things like cruise control, eye tracks, and of course the most popular, which is spot lock. All right, before I keep going, I'm gonna get this beautiful girl back in the water. And as I was saying, one of the more popular features of this iPilot motor is spot lock. It's a very powerful tool that allows you to hold position with the push of a button um, on flat water, in current, in the wind, and tidal exchange, it doesn't matter. You're gonna be able to stay on those spots and fish them methodically and really target the structure, cover, or fish that you're looking to catch that day. And there's one way that you can step up your game on your spot lock, and that is by adding a Minn Kota heading sensor. And this heading sensor essentially is a Bluetooth capable compass that communicates with your motor. And what it does is it lets your motor know your orientation and heading. And by adding this heading sensor onto your autopilot kayak, it will enable a feature called spot lock jog. And spot lock jog allows you to essentially move in five foot increments in any direction with the push of a button. Okay, so here I am on spot lock. So if I want to move forward five feet, I can press this plus arrow. You see the motor is going to turn around and it's going to carry me forward five feet. Now, if I want to go uh, reverse, I would just plus the minus. I got a little bit of wind here, so the spot lock's keeping me in that position. Now, let's say I want to go to the right five feet. I press that. There it goes. Movies to the five feet to the right. And then Likewise, if I wanted to go left, I'd press this once. There it goes. Now, if you want to move in increments greater than five feet, you can do that too. Uh, by simply just pushing the button multiple times, it'll move you in five foot increments for each time you push that button. Now, you can mount your heading sensor either near the bow or one of the best areas is adjacent to the seat right behind your little storage compartment, or you can mount it on the stern of your kayak. Now installation of your heading sensor is very easy to do. You just drill a quarter inch hole that you run a cable through and the cable's long enough it can reach from either end of the kayak. Then you have two screws to secure it to the kayak itself. You want to use a 12 volt power system. So you can use the same power system that you're using to power your fish finder. So like here I have mine externally wired into a switch system. and. There's the switch system and I've tied this into there. You can tie it into your 12 volt system however you want to. Uh, this just makes it easy, but you don't want to use the same power source as your motor. And one of the first things you need to do after installing your heading sensor is to pair it with your motor. And that's a very simple task. So first you hold down this little button right here and it'll start to flash blue. Then you're gonna move up and hit the pair button and it'll beep like that when it's paired with the heading sensor. Now the next thing you need to do is to calibrate your heading sensor. And this is actually something good to do periodically even after you've done your initial pairing and calibration, just to make sure that you're getting the best performance out of your heading sensor. Okay, to calibrate your heading sensor, what you need to do first 
is go to your system menu and scroll down to sensor calibration and then press start and now it'll ask you to drive your boat in two complete circles so I'll go ahead and engage the motor and I'll start driving in circles using my rudder and it will show me my progress as I go along here this is a good idea to do on an empty lake away from a lot of boaters There's one circle complete, and all you gotta do is one more. Now we do not have to worry about sensor offset because that has to do with the offset angle of the motor, but because the motor on your iPilot is perfectly oriented straight to the bow, that's not an issue that we have to worry about. So we're done. We can simply go back and go back, and we can go about our day fishing. fish. Nice. Feels decent. Feels decent. Yeah, it's a nice fish. On the Senko. Nice. Check that out. That's gonna do it for me. If you have any questions about your Minn Kota heading sensor and using it with your autopilot kayak, let us know in the comments section below and we'll get back to you. You can find them at your local Minn Kota dealer or you can find them online. All right guys, I'll see you next time out on the water. Bye.